So here in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna be looking at how we create this sliding on type. So we're gonna be looking at placing type, setting up type, adding keyframes, and then also putting that together into a compound clip so that we can add this fade effect at the end. And so there's a lot of nice skills that you're gonna pick up in this tutorial, which will help you in lots of different areas of Final Cut Pro. So let's dive straight in and look at how we're gonna set this up. So the first thing we're gonna go and do is delete the compound clip that we have already connected to our main storyline. So I'm gonna highlight that and delete it. And now we're gonna go ahead and add our type layers. So we're gonna be using the basic type in Final Cut Pro 10. I've got a background here and you can use any video in the background that you want. It doesn't really matter. The main thing we're focused on here is setting up the text. So I'm gonna jump into my type tools across here on the right hand side. I'm gonna keep all selected and then we're gonna have a look for the basic type. So I'm gonna grab this and pull it on to the timeline here. And I want three of these basic titles for each of the words that we're gonna to get to slide on. So I'm gonna use the blade tool and just slice this just before the end of this clip. So we're gonna be switching between the, the blade tool here, the shortcut for which is B, and the select tool, just so that we can grab a stack of these type layers. And once I've gotten there, I'm just gonna adjust the duration so that they're all the same length on the timeline. So essentially what I'm gonna do is, first of all, set up the type for each of these, position them, and then I'm gonna kind of reverse engineer the sliding onto the type. So let's get our type set up first of all. So we'll select our topmost layer here, come to the text options and type in slide. We're gonna increase the size of this nice and big, make it bold. And once you slide to the right there and get to the maximum font size, you can actually hover over the type and increase it even more. And if you hold down shift as you're doing that, it will increase it more quickly. So then I'm gonna jump down to the next title. And it doesn't really matter which layer order these are in because we're not overlapping them in the animation that we're gonna be creating. So we'll set up the same bold and we'll pull the size of this up. And I'm just gonna position this over here towards the left. And we'll just push this up a little bit more and then I'm gonna come down and grab this title. And what I wanna do is make sure that I get the font size for the on and title the same. So I'm just making a note of that 252 that I have there. And for the title, we're gonna use the word type. Make this 252 so we can slide to it and make it bold and then just position this to the right there. And then once we've got the size for these two bottom bits of type here, I'm just gonna position those roughly. I'm gonna drop the, the size of this topmost layer down just so it matches the width of those bits of type below. And we'll slide this into position. And again, just nudge it up a tiny bit until we've got a nice block of type there. So that's looking pretty good for the moment. I'm just gonna tidy up the alignment by eye a little bit here. And you can zoom in to 100 or 200% if you wanna just work on getting this lined up a little bit more. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna jump back to fit to screen. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock these elements of type into place by adding a position keyframe somewhere down the timeline. Okay, so I'm gonna to come to around one second here and I'm gonna jump now to my video tab. Now, if you don't see the inspector here across on the right-hand side, you'll just need to go to Window, Show Inspector, so that you can see the inspector. So we're gonna to come to the video options here, and now I'm gonna add a keyframe for the position for each of these layers. And we're gonna animate the slide first, so I'm gonna come back just about a third of a second, so somewhere around 25 frames here. And now for this, I'm gonna slide this across to the left. So I can do this either by grabbing the move tool here and then sliding it across to the left, or I can drag the X position here to pull it across to the left. So I'm gonna zoom out here to around 25% so that I can see the edge there and I can slide it out there and then also just to set this Y position back to zero so that it's not moving up or down at all. So now you can see we've got our slide on, okay? Now, sometimes when you're making these animations, what we've done here is we've added two keyframes, we're animating between those two keyframes. Sometimes when you're doing this on the keyframes, you can get two different options. So if I right click on here, 
you can see I've currently got a smooth transition. I want to change that to linear. It just means that it's going to snap into place. So you want to make sure it's a linear transition there at the end. So now if I wait for this to render and then play this through, you can see we get a nice slide on there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to just when this is almost slid on. And now if you remember, we added a keyframe here already for the on. So I'm just going to right click on the on layer and go to show video animation. Okay, so I've currently got a keyframe for the, the position that the on is currently in. So I'm just going to slide that back a little bit. So we can use these video animation options to move the keyframes around. So now with the on layer selected, I can use the move tool and I'm going to drag the on down. Okay, and just let it snap to the, the center point there. And now if I wait for that to render and come back to the beginning of my timeline, you can see we get a nice smooth transition there. So we'll close the video animation for the on layer, jump to the type layer, and again, just wait for the on to almost be visible. I'm gonna right click here, go to show video animations, and I'm just gonna move this keyframe for the position back a little bit more. And then I'm gonna pull my type layer across to the right hand side here, okay? And just let it snap into position there so it's staying horizontal. And then we can go back to the beginning, wait for it all to render, and then press play. Now, once we've done that, if we want to adjust the timing of things a little bit, we can show the video animation on any one of the layers, and we can just slide these keyframes around either to change when things start or to slow things down if we pull the keyframes further apart. So we can just kind of keep tweaking that as we go through. So I'm pretty happy with how that's flowing now. We've got a nice smooth animation. We can play it through a couple times. And now what I want to do is when we have the type and it's hung on screen for a little bit, and I'm just going to extend it out a teeny tiny bit more, I want to add a closing effect. So I'm going to pull these out and this out a little bit more. So in order to add that closing effect, I want to add it to all three layers. So what I'm going to do here is hold down shift and click on those three layers to select them all, or you can use command and click on each of the three layers. And then I'm gonna to go to file, new, and compound clip. And I'll call this type, type animation. And so now I can add an effect to that layer. It also means I can move the layer around a little bit as well. So I can quite happily nudge that left or right or up or down. And you can see even though we've got the edge of the frame there, the type is still visible because it's animating from off the screen. So Final Cut Pro doesn't crop it at the edge there. So I'm just gonna pull this back to the center here. And now I'm gonna to come to the end of my clip, okay? And what I wanna do is two things. I'm gonna do a, a blur and a fade. So I'm gonna to come to my effects panel here across on the right-hand side. I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur to my type. So at the end here, you can see I've got that Gaussian blur on there. and I want this to happen relatively quickly. So just looking at the number of frames there. So we're gonna go from frame 11 to frame 27 and get the text to blur out between two points. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come up to my effects panel in the inspector, drop the blur down to zero, add a keyframe, and then come to the end of my clip here and increase the blur right up and we can use the blur boost if we want to, if we want to blur it even more. And then if I select the end point there, I'm going to go to my transitions and dissolves and add a standard cross dissolve at the end of that type. Let's just delete that first one and shorten it up. So it's only a few frames long. And so what we have now with those layers grouped together in a compound clip, the blur and the fade at the end is something like this. So obviously we can go ahead and change the timing of it. If we right click here, we can show the video animation. It's going to show us the blur, the timing of the blur. So if we want to speed that up, it looks like it was a hanging a little bit at the end. We can keyframe that and we can modify the end there as well. So we can speed things up and just wait for it to render. So one thing you will find when you're working with effects is that you will need to render things from time to time. 
if you want to speed things up, you could work in a proxy setup before you render things out. And you can do that just by going to view and proxy. But if you're working with any video files, you would need to transcode those to a, a proxy version of the original footage. So let's press play now. And that's looking pretty nice. So we've got the slide on and uh, fade out. So if we double click here, we can double click into those layers of animation so we can still edit and modify those. We can change the type. We've got a compound clip up here so we could actually duplicate these if we wanted to change the type that we were using in the animations. But obviously we can come in here as well and edit any of the text settings, any of the type settings, such as the color, the font, the alignment, that kind of thing. Um, but it would still remain in our animation because it's within that compound clip. So there are a lot of plugins that you can get to perform these functions for you, but I really like to do it manually so I can get the timing just perfect. One other thing I will mention about the keyframing, if we just double click into our text animation here, is when you're animating the type, just watch out for the number of keyframes that you're adding. So if I right click to show the video animation, sometimes when you're moving around edit point here, if you're adding keyframes, then you can often make movements and add just one too many keyframes around an edit point. And so you can get a little bit of jumping. So as you're getting used to keyframing, just make sure you have a look at the video animation and keep an eye on where the keyframes are being created. We can highlight keyframes here and use backspace to delete them. Um, and you can also right click and delete them as well. So that's how to set up a build on animation for type in Final Cut Pro 10. I hope you found it useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.